It was a killing spree that terrorized the Houston area just last summer. Investigators say Jose Rodriguez cut off his ankle monitor, then robbed and shot multiple victims. Three people were killed. His case sparked a month-long Channel 2 investigation focusing on dangerous parolees and the state's responsibility to protect the public when an ankle monitor is disabled. Tonight, investigator Joel Eisenbaum reveals the mistakes made and what's being done to make sure they don't happen again. In Houston. I said, where you been, Joe? And he's like, well, I cut my monitor off. They're out killing. We had three dead by Monday morning. And what's protecting you from them aren't bars, but bracelets. I'm telling you, it's the worst things ever that I have experimented in my life. Since June, three state prison parolees in unrelated cases dismembered their ankle monitors with catastrophic results. These were the highest supervision level sure. parolees. I mean, between them, they killed five people. And, and uh, that is horrible. They will get the death penalty. That may settle one question, but there are most certainly others. In the case of serial killer Jose Rodriguez, there was a critical three-day gap between the time his ankle monitor signaled a tamper alert and when law enforcement issued a warrant for his arrest. Did you guys do what you're supposed to do? I think we could have done more on an investigation piece, more expedited. It, it's always looking back. Hindsight is always seems to be 2020. But the state's parolee monitoring program is actually a lot fuzzier than 2020. And that's because the Texas Department of Criminal Justice will not share its data when it comes to response times. Again, Based on the Attorney General's opinion, that is protected um, based on security reasons. TDCJ says on average the agency responds to ankle monitor alerts within two hours. And you'll have to take their word on that because not even the chair of the Texas Senate's Criminal Justice Committee gets a closer look. I mean, a guy like you could just say, Director, just give, me some, give me some metric we can use to see it. what the I've response already, I've already done And it. he said, go take a walk. No, he says, Senator, I hear you, it's security concerns. That's good enough for you. I'm going to tell you one more time. Nothing's good for me until we fix a multitude of criminal justice issues. One big issue is that TDCJ has no police force of its own, no ability to arrest its own violators. Instead, it relies on local cops to do that work. He ran in and grabbed a baseball bat. I don't want to talk about this. It's too vivid. 63-year-old Paul Ramirez cut off his ankle monitor, and TDCJ issued a warrant for his arrest. That was September 2nd. Yet for weeks, nobody took any action until it was too late. She had been calling the law all day and telling them that she felt threatened. 60-year-old Charlene Cadwell was murdered with a baseball bat 36 days after the arrest warrant was issued for Ramirez. The one thing that the state of Texas is not doing a good job of, I don't believe, is that we're not going after parole violators because of limited resources. Art Acevedo is among a chorus of police chiefs who've said TDCJ has not done a good job sharing critical information. TDCJ's one-page warrants which arrive regularly, don't discern potentially dangerous fugitives from garden variety violators. We wanted to work with uh, the state to get more timely notification. That's been worked out. That good news comes too late for these people. And how well TDCJ responds to ankle monitor alerts remains a black box. I'm saying, is there anybody else who's taking a look at this information to see how efficient and effective you are? I'm not, I, I can't answer that, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if there's other individuals looking at that information. Perhaps not with the public, but with local police, TDCJ appears to be doing a better job sharing critical info. With the improvement, HPD, HCSO, and others just arrested 164 wanted parolees. Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Channel 2 News.